and welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. On today's program, we will check in with the Quincy Symphony Orchestra and learn all about their upcoming Pops concert on the Hancock Adams Common in Quincy Center next month. First, though, we take a look at the weather and the news for you. Currently in Quincy, some hazy sunshine out there. It's 79 degrees right now. Kind of a warm, humid day today with temperatures in the mid-80s. Look out for some afternoon and evening showers and thunderstorms. It'll clear out late tonight. Temperatures will dip into the mid 60s. Then a beautiful stretch of weather coming our way for the middle part of the week this week. Look at tomorrow. Just gorgeous wall to wall sunshine, low humidity, mild temperatures in mid 70s. Cool tomorrow night under clear skies. Temperatures will dip into the upper 50s. Still another nice day on Wednesday. Just a few more clouds. Highs again in the mid 70s and some clouds increase on Thursday. They will bring some rain by Thursday nights with highs Thursday into the mid 70s. Right now, Friday looks to be a washout, but hazy and Quincy 79 degrees right now. In the news today, we actually begin with a little bit of breaking news this morning. There was a house fire in Quincy about an hour ago at 159 Crescent Street over in West Quincy. Fire broke out on the second floor of that two-story house. Two people were rescued from a rear roof of that building. Quincy firefighters are still on scene this morning, and so far no other information on that is available. Other news today, as the city of Boston gets closer to receiving full approval to rebuild the Long Island Bridge, Quincy continues to oppose the bridge project, citing concerns about dangerous traffic through Squantum. Boston recently received approval for another permit for the new bridge. Boston Mayor Michelle Wu acknowledges Quincy's concerns, but says a substance use treatment center on Long Island will benefit all communities, including Quincy. Really striving to be a good neighbor in that way, in terms of putting our resources, our time and energy and leadership into creating what will be essentially a regional public health campus uh, that will serve people from all over, uh, because that is what we are already doing now. At the same time, in the role of mayor, I completely um, identify with and uh, respect um, Mayor Koch's role in needing to ensure that all of the impacts that we might not be thinking about in our purview uh, that will impact his residents and constituents that he has to be thinking about and raising as issues. Uh, we did, I've, I've spoken with him a couple times. We've sat down about um, the, the bridge and, and the island and, and the campus. Um, have chatted very recently about this latest permit as well. Um, so I know that he and I and mayors across the, the state share a sense of urgency that we have to do more for residents who need services and support. Um, and he is going to continue advocating to make sure that the quality of life impacts or other um, potential uh, impacts relating to traffic or congestion are on the table. And we are going to continue doing what we can do to always be aware of that, minimize those impacts. Um, we have really seen this in terms of a, a pretty successful operation in years past, and uh, we're looking to make sure that we can connect all the dots, uh, not only for the city of Boston, but for the residents from all across the region who will receive services here. Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch is appealing this latest permit for the new bridge, and Mayor Wu anticipates that appeal will take about a year to resolve. However, she anticipates Boston will win the appeal, as it has every appeal the city of Quincy has filed in an attempt to stop a new bridge from being built. Boston still requires two additional permits for that project. The recently approved $56.2 billion state budget includes $45.1 million for the Quincy Public Schools. Mayor Thomas Koch says the increase in school funding comes at a critical time for the city. You know, as, as uh, folks may know, we get all state aid, local aid. It's broken down into uh, unrestricted general local aid and Chapter 70 local aid and then Chapter 90, which is money towards street resurfacing. And uh, the big, big significant increase was in the education side, the Chapter 70, which was uh, very timely for us because of all the uh, contracts that we settled. And we had some market adjustments on some of the real lower-paid employees, such as food service workers and the cafeterias, uh, 
paraprofessionals. I mean, they were barely making minimum wage, so uh, we made some good adjustments. So that that helped quite a bit. Um, as you also know, we, as a city, we did a lot of dedicate a lot of resources to the schools beyond the school budget, from the various departments, the debt service, uh, health insurance, all those other categories. So this does help us keep up with some of those costs that continue to rise. And I want to thank, you know, Speaker Mariano and Representatives Chan and Ayers and Senator Keenan for their advocacy and support of local aid. Uh, they've been great partners for us. Quincy did see an $8 million increase in state funding for the school department this year. The mayor says Quincy will likely see about $2 million in state funding for road and sidewalk repairs this fiscal year. Well, the state's second welcome center for migrants and people experiencing homelessness has been operating on the campus of Eastern Nazarene College in Quincy for several weeks now. The state contracted with that school to house that center and also an emergency shelter. ENC's Dean and Vice President of Academic Affairs, Dr. William McCoy, says no one living around ENC will even notice that new operation. The folks who are coming here are being carefully screened. Uh, they and and are you know families with young children. Uh, they are uh, they are given a, a pretty strict uh, code of conduct um, in terms of their personal behavior and their very clear rules around that. Uh, and we've increased our security presence and are are working with partnering with QPD and others to make sure that. You know, we don't have people, no one's going to be allowed to loiter or set up a tent on our baseball field or, or things like that. When, when people do show up who aren't eligible for our particular program, uh, uh, they will, you know, as I mentioned earlier, there's a plan in place to help those people find resources uh, in, the, in the right locations. McCoy says ENC was not using the space due to declining enrollment and also says the new center fits with their Christian-based education. ENC is exploring how students and staff can interact with people in the new shelter to benefit both. Bay State Community Services of Quincy plus a shelter management firm are operating that new welcome center. A Quincy man being held without bail after pleading not guilty to attacking and trying to rape a woman in Boston last week. 35-year-old Amos Sykes has pleaded not guilty to grabbing a woman from behind on Columbus Avenue in the South End last Saturday night, dragging her to the ground, hitting her in the head and trying to undress her. Witnesses intervened. Sykes was arrested a short time later. He was ordered held without bail pending his next court date on September 13th. The woman was treated at a local hospital for non-life-threatening injuries. Well, the Quincy North Quincy Band Program is celebrating after four current students and four alumni were part of the Spartans Drum and Bugle Corps championship win. The band members toured with the Corps all summer long, performing in 30 shows in 25 states. The Spartans won the Open Class World Championship at the Drum Corps International World Championships in Indianapolis back on August 8th. The band members from Quincy were Quincy High's Aaron Ernest, Ethan Ernest, Nathan Aronoff, and Rebecca Dang, and North Quincy's Anders Eshelman, Anthony Bagnarelli, Liana Gao, and Gio McKenzie. It's our check of news for you today. Coming up, we sit down with the president and the conductor of the Quincy Symphony Orchestra. That's next. Welcome back, Quincy Symphony Orchestra, preparing to enter their 70th concert season next year. But before they do that, they have to get through 2023. And the kicks off on September 9th with the annual Pops Concert on the Common with the Quincy Choral Society. So President Brian Hickox and conductor Yuichi Utagawa are back in studio to tell us all about it. Hey, guys. Hey, Joe. Hey, good morning. Great to see you. Yeah, happy <laughs> uh, rest of summer, I guess, right? This right. <laughs> is yeah, quickly we, winding down. Yeah, look, I can't believe how quickly it's <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, a month from today is the start of autumn. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Back to school. Here we go. Put it, put it all in perspective, right? Uh, but we're still in summer. We're still, yeah. in, still in summer mode. Let's and just tell ourselves that. That's right. And when the Pops concert is uh, being held on September 9th, it'll still be summer, technically. So it makes me think back to when my mom would bring me down to Hanlon Shoes for the school <laughs> shoes for going back on September. All right, we're not going to go down that road. Because <laughs> the kids listening don't know what we're talking That's about, right. Brian. Yeah. That's right. uh, so how has the summer been going for the symphony? Well, it's interesting. Yep. Yoichi uh, and I have been working uh, along with the board of directors for the Quincy Symphony Orchestra on our programming for this upcoming season, 2023-2024, right. which is, in fact, our complete season for the 90th, excuse me, 70th Seven. season. Of the Don't Quincy rush Symphony us. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're getting old enough fast anyway. And so it's, it's been fun working together, uh, putting programs together, putting soloists together, uh, getting the dates of concerts, and uh, we're finalizing everything yeah, yeah, yeah. as we speak. It's, I mean, it's pretty remarkable when you think about this is, we're talking about an all volunteer orchestra with a, uh, with a professional music director um, to last 70 years. Yeah, it's a yeah. tribute to uh, not only the individual musicians, but the support in the community. Yeah. There's no doubt there are, you know, there are some long-standing families here in Quincy that have, uh, have helped either with volunteerism or financial support. Um, there are the local musicians and people coming near and far to play mm -hmm. uh, yeah. with this group because it's at a great level. Exactly. It's, uh, yeah. it's, it's certainly not an entry level, so uh, it, it's, it's fun to see that. So it's, it's not just businesses, it's the families, it's the city, it's the schools, it's the performers. It's a lot to put together, but it's mm -hmm. that fabric of so many different facets that has endured for 70 years. And it's the love of music, right? And yeah. the love of, of entertaining and, uh, you know, giving something back to their community. Most of them are from Quincy, right? Or have Quincy roots. Yeah, that's, it's true. Yeah. yeah, Whether it's the shoe store or not. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and, and, and as Brian alluded to, uh, the schools and the city and the mayor have been tremendously uh, supported yes, too. Yes, that's so great. So it, it's, it's, it's just a large community that has spo supported the Quincy Symphony. And the yeah. venue too, Yoichi, right? Yeah, that, yeah. Uh, at the high school auditorium oh, with absolutely. the new facility there has, yeah. has yeah. Uh, I, I think, probably raise the level of professionalism if uh, people absolutely. feel like they want yeah. to perform. But you know, North nice Quincy venue. High School has also been upgraded. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and we may be performing there a couple times this year. Okay. And that's, that's you know, it, it's, it's amazing how much the schools have upgraded and, and the school uh, department and the city have just, I, th I think, really worked hard to up upgrade everything. The whole music yeah, program yeah, actually yeah, in public schools. Yeah. And uh, the I, teachers I, are fabulous. Yeah. The um, fabulous. Just reported yeah. on the success of the, of the band program. That yeah. has come, you know, miles oh. in, in a pretty short period of time as Fantastic. well. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. So it's all yeah. good stuff. It's, it's all good. And I know you <laughs> yourself, Yoichi, comment on the talent of, of young people today in the, in the, in the world of music, right? It's yeah. amazing. <laughs> I'm, always, I'm always telling people, oh, thank God I'm not starting out now. Right. Oh yeah, the really, really, the, the and, and there are, you know, young conductors now that uh, and famous ones too, and you just watch them, and you just go, "Oh my gosh!" At that age, I didn't know, you know, I didn't know which way it was so up. Playing in the sandbox. Oh right? my <laughs> gosh, it's, it's incredible. What do you attribute that to? It. You know, I I think it's just that generally we have much more opportunity to access information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, in some ways, the iPhone and the internet is a curse, right? Because we're all stuck in our uh, devices and stuff like that. But in another way, it's just opened up the the, you know, access to information. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll just give you one example. Sure. If I wanted to hear a piece of music when I was a kid, we'd have to go to the record store and buy it. Right. Right. Yeah. At, just to even hear a performance. Now, any young person who's interested in music can access all records ever, you know, made. <laughs> At their fingertips. At their fingertips. Yes. Now, For or, free. Yeah, or if yeah. I wanted to see a performance of, you know, some famous orchestra like the Boston Symphony or the Berlin Philharmonic. When I was a kid, we had to w wait until it showed up on PBS once a year, maybe. <laughs> and if you missed it, it was gone. You missed it, right. right? Yeah. But now people just click, click, and, you know, you can see all the great orchestras every film they made, yes. every concert for free. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that just has to be turbocharging, especially young talent. Um, and, and I have a brother who is a, a biochemist, and he says the young scientists are just off the charts. Is that right? Yeah. Because of that same reason they no, just I have access? I think so. I yeah. think they just have access to that information. Yeah. 
And they, I mean, if they're looking for inspiration, they can find it, right? It, 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 all it, over the place. See someone yeah. in that role yeah. uh, in, in their generation, they think, yeah. if they can do it, yeah. you know, why can't I do oh, it? Absolutely. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's remarkable in that sense. And we, we have a uh, young concerto competition, and yes. right every year we come out of there going, oh my God, we're judging these. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll, right. I'll never forget there was a judge one year who said, I have practiced the violin more years than this kid's been alive. <laughs> <laughs> never played that well. <laughs> and sometimes it's a, it's a, it's a it, tough decision. It, you know, it, they, it they're, really. they're to, because there's really just one that can be the winner. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they perform with us typically in our May, a, end of April, beginning of May yes. concert. Yeah. And our uh, competition usually is in January, February. Okay. So. Uh, it's uh, it's great to see. Yeah, well, I mean, Brian, you yourself have been performing with the orchestra now for how many years? This will be my 40th season. 40th season. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. have you I found... I was two. You were two, yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but have you found, you know, the, the accessibility of information like Yuichi talked about uh, beneficial in your performing? Yeah, absolutely. Really? You know, we would come to rehearsal sometimes, and there would be the the music that we've never seen before yeah. of a piece. And okay, <laughs> we'd have to trudge through it with all the trial and error. Yes. Now we can hear various styles of different performers mm. uh, executing that same piece of music. And then we get to formulate, along with Yoichi, mm -hmm. what that style we should be conveying within the performance. Yeah, okay, so it's just, you have just that much more accessibility and information uh, to practice, right? Yeah, it's sort of like the cliff notes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you remember those? <laughs> no. <laughs> I have no idea what either one of you are talking about. <laughs> what are you about. talking about? <laughs> and, you know, speaking of seeing seeing videos of, you know, you can go to QATV.org. Yes. And you can see the Quincy Symphony Orchestra performances that you've videoed Absolutely. over the years, including the outdoor concert. Mm -hmm. So We uh, may be inspiring some, uh, some new members for the orchestra, you know, uh, in the years ahead. Who knows? Yeah, we just had uh, a Quincy High School student just join our ranks this past really? season. So we're uh, looking forward to continuing with her. And it's, it's great to see, you know, the, the young energy coming in. You know, at first they may be a little overwhelmed with all the gray hair sitting next to them. But uh, the, the, she's fitting in just great. Yeah, but I would think, if you, wish you could probably comment on this, is that the generations feed off each other, oh, right? Uh, it, it, I, and I tell you, the, in that sense, uh, I, mean, I think it's certainly true in the QSO, but I'm sure yeah. it's true in other community orchestras. Uh, people who love music, they want to share it. And right. if you're an older player, it's thrilling to have younger players come. And I, and I remember a time when I was a younger player, yeah. you know, a younger conductor, and, it, and, and people would always be mentoring and helping out. So it, it, it's, it's a, you know, it, it's a fun scene. It, it's a... Uh, very relaxed and um, encouraging atmosphere. Yeah, so yeah, it's, you're it's all great. Yeah. Artists and you all mm -hmm. love music, so yeah. you have that that passion, yeah. that commonality, you know, mm -hmm. to to launch from there, right? Yeah, and, and absolutely. Express yourselves. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, we're talking about the annual Pops concert, which is coming up on Saturday, September 9th, from 4 to 7 p.m. on the Hancock Adams Common in Quincy Center. Um, annual. So, how did this all get started? So I don't recall the first time this. Well, all let's started. see. We uh, basically the mayor kind of started oh, it, okay. and he he's been incredibly supportive, and the city has. Uh, we work with a gentleman named John McDonald, who's tremendously helpful, mm -hmm. and uh, he's helping to organize some of these events. And uh, we're going to be playing from roughly four to six, and then I think there's going to be a group after us for about another hour or so. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, I think it's singers, oh, right? Okay. And um, the, the Quincy Chorus and, uh, and the Quincy Symphony are going to be performing together, and uh, they have a wonderful young director, Sarah Labrie. Yes. And yeah. that, now she, she, she's another young person where you look and you go, oh my God, she's so much <laughs> Actually, the first female <laughs> first director female conductor of the, the Quincy, Quincy Choral Society. Society, and they're over 40 years old themselves. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. and she's terrific. She's professional and easy to work with and uh, just a, a wonderful person to as well, so yeah. in addition to being a great talent. And so we're going to be uh, doing uh, some pieces together. Okay. And so some of the pieces I'll direct and some of the pieces oh, I see. she'll direct. So okay. we're going to be passing the baton. Oh, fun. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Literally. Literally. <laughs> <coughs> and then I'll ask the members of the orchestra which conductor they prefer <laughs> <laughs> when neither one of you are around. <laughs> it's like ice cream. What's better, strawberry or chocolate? Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> 
but it's, you're calling it a pop concert, so I'm assuming yeah. it's popular music, right? Yeah, so we're going to have things like Star Wars okay. and uh, Star Trek. Okay. And, <clears throat> and then um, uh, we're actually going to have a little bit of classical music, too. Uh, Puccini's Humming Chorus. So they're going to, this is a very famous scene okay. from an opera by Puccini, Madame Butterfly. Oh. And then uh, we're doing stuff from uh, Sound of Music Fun. with yeah. the chorus that, that Sarah will be conducting. So it, it sh it's going to be a, a, a great program for the family, I think. Yes, yeah. And, and it won't just be classical pieces, but uh, so it would be popular music as well as classical Interspersed. Music. Yeah, okay. interspersed. And uh, I think it would be a fun, lively concert for people. Yeah, I've been to a couple of them. I was trying to remember when the first one, was it 2017, I want to say? So is this the sixth? Sixth annual, yeah, something it, was like that? it before the pandemic that yes, we did the first that one? that I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and we used to perform on the uh, Church of the President's side, yes. but now we're on Flip the other side. To we City Hall side? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it had to do with the sun. You okay. Know, the, the, the daytime, and uh, we, when we were on the church side, we were just out in the sun too much. Gotcha. So okay. We uh, couldn't see Yoichi's baton. <laughs> oh, is that what it was? <laughs> <laughs> That's why they played so well. <laughs> You know what else is great about the outdoor concert? <laughs> the outdoor concert brings uh, generations. Yes. You know, the, it's not just sons and daughters, but grandkids oh, sure. coming and, yep. and to see them out and they're dancing. You know, it's yeah. just it's right on the common and just it, it's that uh, that um, infused music into their soul. You see them just dancing around and it's awesome. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's there's something special about I think a live outdoor performance. It's yeah. different than something you'd see inside a concert hall. It's just a different energy, I think. Yeah. You know, to yeah. it with the with the elements around you and the live music going on. Um, so it, yeah, it brings that kind of kid out and everybody I think yeah, yeah. No, no no and and it's it's great for us performers too. is it really yeah it re we really enjoy it do you have to play differently outdoors than not indoors? really no. I mean you know we we have a, a, a great sound people yeah. who come in and and uh, mic everything and, and you have to have that because sure. otherwise you wouldn't be able to hear a thing yeah um, acoustic instruments just don't just have get lost. power. Yeah. yeah, but but because we have that, we just play like it's our regular concert. Okay. Yeah, and it, and if it, it, it from you know it sounds good. It mm -hmm. sounds like you're in a concert hall. It's really, it's amazing yeah. what they can do. There's a lot of little nuances that are going on as if mm -hmm. we were in a concert hall. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is it the full? Uh, is it going to be is. the full symphony? Absolutely. It really yeah. is. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. you're gonna and a cor and a chorus. So mm -hmm. it, it it's. Uh, and, you know, it's we, a visual spectacle, yeah, too. Yeah, and last yeah. year we had a lot of people come out. I mean, and I, and I, I fully expect that it'll be, hopefully, even more people this year. Sure. So, um, Additionally, one yep. of the audience members approached us and said, I play cello. <laughs> she's now within our ranks. Seriously? Yes. Just like that? Just like that. Wow, okay. So she's having a blast, too. Oh, fine, <laughs> okay. A good opportunity, Brian, to ask you, what does the symphony need? Well, uh, we are always looking for talent. Okay. Uh, there, there's no doubt strings are... Strings in particular, strings I would yeah. say. Yeah. yeah, and then lower brass, okay. uh, trombones. Um, uh, horn players are always valuable. Um, now, there, there are some, some chairs that are um, required to be a higher level than others. Okay. All right. So if, if for example, in the strings, um, there's just a lot more people. So you don't have to be the most advanced player yep. to get in. But if you're like a horn player or a trumpet player, right, we don't need a trumpet player. But if, if, if a, a, a chair like that, then the player needs to be a little bit higher level. Because you're in the spotlight, yeah. basically. Yeah, because, yeah. yeah, there's only one per part. Gotcha. Yep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Good to know. And mm -hmm. just reach out through the website. Absolutely. If Absolutely. they have an yeah. interest at all. Okay. Yeah. We only have a couple of minutes left, but Brian, I do want to ask you next, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, next year, 2024, will be the 70th year for the Quincy Symphony Orchestra. So we have a lot of special things. Uh, we actually have a world-renowned soloists coming mm -hmm. to join us, uh, some from the Boston Symphony Orchestra. Really? Uh, we have a world-class uh, television personality going to narrate Peter and the Wolf. <laughs> Really? At the family oh concert in March. At the family Look concert. Don't miss that. it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> world class. We're looking forward to seeing it's you a there. It's a very small world. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do uh, look forward to that. Uh, that was a lot of fun last yeah. time I did. Yeah. Yeah. No, you did a fantastic job. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, my uh, you, you, you really come alive on stage. Budding you know. thespian <laughs> career. <laughs> Way off Broadway. <laughs> so in addition to that uh, world class talent, yeah. um, we're also extending the opportunity <clears> for... Um, families, 
businesses, um, local people to um, be able to honor someone. Uh, either in, uh, in honor of them and, or in memory of them, um, setting up a lasting legacy for them here in Quincy oh. by, uh, by endowing chairs of the orchestra. Oh, okay. So there's only one chair for each musician, as we know. Uh, however, we're going to reach out to the community. There, as we said, there are some families that have been associated with the orchestra for decades on end. Generations. And other people, yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah. generations. And they may want, for example, a principal clarinet chair to be sponsored in perpetuity oh. and the the purpose of that gift is never to take those funds and spend them yet the yield on that to help the operations ongoing of the orchestra okay so this is naming a chair in perpetuity is a great tribute to a family member or a loved one okay all right so look for more information on that coming that's on. right Excellent. you can reach out to me directly on that uh, president at quincy symphony orchestra dot org all right Thank you both. Really Thank fun to talk much. to Thanks you. Great Joe. to see you. <laughs> Likewise, look forward to another fun season. <laughs> Just enough time to check the forecast for you for the rest of the day today. Kind of a summer-like day, actually. Kind of hazy out there with a muggy high in the mid-80s. Look out for some storms around this afternoon and this evening. But that clears the way for a beautiful stretch of weather tomorrow, Wednesday. Thursday's pretty nice, too, before the next chance for rain here on Friday. Thanks again to Brian Hickox, Yuichi Utagawa, for thank joining you. us. From Thanks, Joe. Symphony. Thank you. Thanks to our crew, and thank you for watching. Friday here on the program, we get to meet the city's new diversity, equity, and inclusion liaison. Before that, check our website anytime. It's qatv.org. You will find our latest programs. There's news and information there, video on demand, live streaming, and a whole lot more. For all of us here at QATV, I'm Joe Catalano. Have a great week.